Hi, I'm Laura from Meadowlark Violin and welcome to my online studio. Today I want to talk to you about how to set up a great practice routine that will yield wonderful results and it's great for beginners, intermediate, and advanced players. And how do I know? Well, I've tried a lot of different variations on practice routines over the years and I've come to determine that this set of this routine is the best routine for the best results. So let's start talking through it. First, you always want to do stretches. It's very important to make sure that your muscles are warmed up before you start playing. Now there's no one perfect way to do stretches for violinists. I generally start with big muscles and then I work my way down to the smaller muscles and make sure that they are ready to go. Next, I do another type of warm up, and this is before scales. This is a warm up that you need to do before scales, and there's a lot of variations you could do with this. But basically, during this time period, I'm doing open strings, I'm doing uh, slides with my left hand to get my left hand warmed up, and I've got a lot of options for you to do during this kind of pre scale warm up. And there's another video on five essential warm ups for violinists. I'll link that in the description below. But this is something that I think a lot of people skip over, and it's super important. Before you go straight into scales, you really need to warm up just your bow hand and you need to warm up just your left hand before you start combining them. But then once you've gone through that period, now it is time to do scales. Now, you know what I love about scales? They're endless, endless possibilities. I uh, have a lot of chickens, so I make a lot of dishes with eggs. And one of my favorite desserts is cream brulee because it's so simple. It's eggs, cream, and sugar, right? But what you can do with cream brulee is if you want to make a lavender Earl Grey cream brulee, you can do that. If you want to make an apple cinnamon cream brulee, yeah, you just take your basic cream brulee recipe and do whatever you want with it and you have an amazing dessert. Well, scales are the cream brulee of the violin world because you can take this basic recipe for a scale and add endless possibilities of variations to get unique, wonderful little recipes for your violin technique. So what you could do is if you're struggling with some sort of slurred bowing in one of your solo pieces, okay, Take that slurred bowing, whatever it is that's giving you trouble, and add it into your scale. Voila, you've just got a perfect way to practice that really hard thing, but you're doing it in a slightly simpler version, right? A scale is always gonna be easier to play most of the time than that harder solo that you're working on. So if you can take that element that's making your solo tricky and add it into your scales, you've got a personalized, little exercise just for you to help you overcome your issues. Now it is important to do scales and arpeggios. A lot of times teachers leave out arpeggios or method books leave out arpeggios. Arpeggios are equally as important as scales because you will see them all over in music. So definitely practice your arpeggios too. Now it's also important to, whatever scale you're working on, play it until you're sick of it. Don't do C major one day, A major the next day, F, F major the next day. No, you're never going to make any progress that way. If you're on C major, stick with C major until you are absolutely sick of it. Okay, That's how you know you've learned everything you need to learn at that time and you can move on. Same thing with whatever kind of exercise you're doing. If you're doing two slurred bows with a scale, okay, do that exercise until you're sick of it, until you can do it really well. Because a lot of times people move on before they've totally mastered a skill. So they're always moving on, moving on, never mastering a skill. And so they're never really making the complete progress they could have made. And think about it, if you play something till you're absolutely sick of it, that means you've got the left hand down, you've got the right hand down. And now you can start to think about other things. Instead of just intonation and bowing, you can start to think about, hmm, I could get a better tone right there. Yeah. Oh, wow, what if I did this with my arm? Yeah, I could get a lot smoother bow change right there. Do you see how you could totally change your progress if you just stick with things until you're absolutely sick of them? <laughs> then you know it's time to move on. Next up is your etude. Now, what is an etude? Well, it's a piece or an exercise. It's not quite like a scale. It's not quite like a solo piece. It's something in the middle. I kind of think of it as like 
scales uh, plus, right? It's a certain piece that it's going to take a certain element, a certain technique, and just going to do it over and over and over again for the whole song. For instance, trills. There's lots of etudes out there that it's just lots of trills, a whole page long. You'd never see that in a solo piece, but in an etude you would. But it's, it's written in a way that it's pretty. It sounds like a song, but it's focusing on just that one element. Now the problem with etudes is that there's not a lot for brand new beginners. And I'm fixing this. I'm working on a project for etudes for brand new beginners because I think it's so important. But if you don't have any etudes yet, or if you're not to that point where you're working through etudes, your method book would work right here. Go through those exercises in your method book. This is an important step. I think a lot of people skip in their practice routine. They go straight from scales to that solo piece that they're learning. But I've tried this. I tried taking out etudes for a while just because I didn't have time and I'd rather do my scales and my solo piece. And I could tell a huge difference in my technique. It's not enough just to do scales and do your solo piece. You've got to work in this etude. It's really going to do wonders for your technique. All right, after you've done your etude, it's time for that solo piece that you've been working on. And again, with your solo piece, you wanna stick with it until you're sick of it. That way you've learned everything you can, and then you've progressed to the next level where you're learning dynamics, other things like that. Now, always start with your problem spots with your solo piece. Don't just start at the beginning. Start working on the hard parts first. That way your focus is the sharpest. Then once you've worked through those problem spots, then you can go start back at the beginning and kind of play through. Now, the other thing with solo songs is don't have too many of them. Don't have five different solo pieces that you're trying to work up to a certain level. I would say a max of two pieces at a time that you're working on perfecting. But then after you do your solo piece, you're not done. Okay, you need to finish off your practicing with something you do really, really well some easy song that you know you can play and you enjoy playing. And this is really important because it's gonna end your practice time on a high note. Not a literal high note, but an enjoyable high note. It's very important when you end your practice time that you are excited to practice again. You can't wait. Sometimes I'm playing through something and I play it. And it's, oh, it sounds great. That was wonderful. Uh, let me do it again. And I stop myself. No, 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 no. I just played it great. I just played it wonderful. You know what? I'm going to put this away and I'm going to come back. That way I can't wait to come back and try it again. We've talked about, that's like the basic structure I would suggest. Warm-ups your scales, etudes, solo pieces, something fun. And that's one side of practicing. That's this organized side of practicing that is essential. But there's another side to practicing. And that's your experimental time, okay? You need to have a time somewhere in your practice routine where there are no expectations, there are no goals, there is no structure. You're playing just for the joy of playing. You're literally playing around with the violin. You're experimenting and doing different things. Maybe you're trying to pick out a song by ear. Great. Maybe you're just kind of having fun and saying, hmm, what if I did this with my bow hand? Or what if I, what if I did this with my left hand? Or huh, what's it like to play way up here? That experimenting time is going to teach you so much about the violin. It's going to teach you so much about yourself that no teacher could ever teach you. That's when you're really being your own teacher. And I cut this out of my practice time for a long time. I shouldn't say cut it out. I never even did it because I was so focused on this organized, really structured practice time that I didn't have time to experiment. I was busy. I was, I was focused. And later on in life, I started wanting to have more fun with the violin and this experimental practice time was the answer. It's how I was able to really enjoy playing the violin and continue to learn more about myself and the violin. So it's very important to add that in too. Now, you don't have to do all of this at once. In fact, it's best if you don't, if you split it up. Do your warm-ups, do your stretches, do your, do your scales and your etude. That might be one, one practice session. Then come back later and work on your solo piece. Then maybe you'll come back later and work on that second solo piece or something like that. But it is important when you do your second and third sessions of the day, you still need to do a little warm up. Okay, something, it doesn't have to be your full routine, but 
open strings, maybe a, a nice slow scale, all of that is going to help you play better. Okay, just because you already warmed up doesn't mean that your muscles need just a few more minutes to get warmed up again. So I hope this helps you develop a really good practice routine that will yield the best results. If you want more help with learning to play the violin, check out my website, meadowlarkviolin.com. There's a lot of free violin resources. And also sign up for my newsletter. There's a link in the description below. You'll get a free scale book. And this is not just your freebie scale book. This is over 20 pages of scales with lots of exercises on every page. It will keep you busy for at least six months, maybe a year, maybe several years. So check it out, download it. I think you'll love it. All right, I'm Laura from Meadowlark by Lynn. Happy practicing.